Hello and welcome to another AIC video. Today we have two laptops here in front of me and I have demonstrated both of these before. However, this video is going to be a little bit different because on my left I have my IdeaPad 1 that I have upgraded with an SSD. I gave somebody some money and they updated or soldered a connector on there for me. I quickly demonstrated that in a previous video. And on the right, I have my HP with the AMD Athlon Silver. And I have put this back to stock. So when I very first got it, before I even powered it on, I upgraded the memory on this, and then I upgraded the storage on here. And I didn't actually do any testing on this as is out of the box. And so that's what I'm gonna be doing today is comparing the AMD 3050, excuse me, the 3020E versus the 3050U, and I'm going to say those incorrectly. Sorry for my fingers here. <laughs> I'm gonna say those incorrectly in this video a bunch because CPU names are stupid, and when they're so close together, I, I'm, I'm gonna get them wrong. Let's first talk about the CPUs themselves. I have notebook checkup here, uh, just with some information about these CPUs. On the left with the AMD 3020E, it has two cores, uh, they are Zen Plus, I believe, according to this. And it has an integrated Radeon, I believe it's three graphics. Yeah, Vega 3 graphics with three compute cores. On the right, the 3050U is a slightly older uh, design. And it only has Vega 2 graphics with two compute cores. The big difference between these two systems is this is a 6 watt passively cooled CPU, where this is a 15 watt actively cooled CPU. And the real question comes down to, is there a big difference between a slightly newer architecture with slightly better graphics, supposedly, hopefully, with being a Vega 3 versus a Vega 2, uh, with this one being actively cooled a little bit higher TDP than this one being passively cooled. So that's kind of what I wanted to see today. Uh, I haven't compared these side by side um, and I'm glad I'm they're as close as they can be. They both have their CPU. They both only have four gigs of RAM and they both are running an NVMe SSD. So they're as apples to apples as I can get. I did go ahead and pull up uh, CPU Z here. Uh, the code name for the 3020 E is it's a dolly I uh, couldn't find a whole lot of information about that uh, it's on a 12 nanometer same as the um, Athlon silver which is a Picasso uh, code name there so again not quite sure if we go over to graphics uh, unfortunately this doesn't pull up a whole lot of information uh, this does show that it is Vega 3 there. This doesn't show it just as AMD Radeon graphics. So we'll see the difference there. So let's go ahead. I've done all updates. I've even updated the BIOS. That's one thing with these systems is if there's a BIOS update, I highly recommend doing it because it can have a huge impact on performance. So I'm sorry, I'm doing this with two hands trying to get to the same place at the same time. All right, so both of these are running performance test 10.1. I do run an evaluation version of this, but I have paid for it. So let's go ahead and just go through these here real quick. Uh, Radeon graphics, both running with uh, 512 megabytes of RAM. Now when I upgraded this one, I believe it did actually increase that uh, graphics memory to a gig. Um, I'll have to double check that, but I think it did. And this does show Vega 3 graphics here on the left. Let's go ahead and go back. And we both are running 4 gigs of memory. Uh, now, it is slightly faster memory on the Lenovo. It's 3200 megahertz, where the HP only is running to 2667. So you can change that on here on the uh, HP because it is upgradable. All right, and then the CPU. 
we have the Athlon Silver there on the right, and we have the AMD 3020E on the left. All right, let's go ahead and run benchmarks. Now, I will be doing a lot of running the benchmarks for you in fast forward mode. So let's go ahead and get that started. Wow, so it's so funny how those finished. So during like the 3D uh, benchmarks, the Lenovo actually got behind the HP there for a little while, but then definitely caught back up when doing the memory and the disk check. Uh, part of that is uh, I think the SSD that I have in the Lenovo is, it's a Sovereign, it's a, it's a Sovereign Rocket. So it's not like the highest end SSD, but it's a fair shake better than the SSD in the uh, HP that it comes with. So uh, that's one of the reasons why I upgraded the S SSD in here, not just for capacity when I was doing gaming, but for um, just overall performance. Cause obviously they're gonna put the cheapest thing in a budget system. I don't, I, I want to say I spent $200 for this laptop. So they're not going to put a $50 SSD in here. Uh, they're going to put in a $3 SSD or something. So anyways, uh, here's the, the rating CPU mark. Obviously the HP is, it, it did better. Um, it, it's a higher watt TDP. It's actively cooled. And so it can hit, it can just do more without hitting a thermal limit like the Lenovo will. That being said, these scores are extremely, extremely respectable. 
uh, 200 and excuse me, 2000, uh, 2,500 for the Lenovo, 3,200, almost 3,300 for the HP, um, 2D graphics. Uh, this, this score really suffers, uh, with the new version of Passmark. Um, so it's pretty low for both of them. 3D though is a pretty darn good score. Uh, again, $150 for this laptop to about $200 for this laptop. Obviously, prices are all over the place. That's what I paid for them a while ago. Uh, but I have seen this laptop for sale on Lenovo's website uh, as a doorbuster a couple of times in the last few months uh, for that $150, $160 price range. Uh, the HP really comes and goes as far as price, so I can't really say today what its price is. Um, I can only go off of what I paid for it. Uh, the disc mark. Uh, the disc mark is kind of funny. It's uh, 13,000, almost 14,000 versus uh, uh, almost 4,000. So a 900 point uh, improvement uh, on the Lenovo. Or excuse me, a nine, uh, no, a 10,000 uh, point uh, improvement there. So, you know, big, big improvement there. Um, memory mark surprised me because this one has slower memory, but it still did a little bit better. Uh, for that probably because this one soldered to the system board um, with a little bit slower of a CPU so let's go ahead and run one more benchmark here we are going to run Cinebench they're both running the latest version R23 Start them at the same time. And really what we're looking on this is just to see if there's much of a difference as they uh, compute. I get asked a lot, you know, can they render video, can you edit video and things like that on these? Uh, I personally wouldn't choose to do that on these systems, uh, but the answer is always you can, it's just how, how much are you willing to sit there and wait. So we'll give them just a moment to kind of work through. You can already see that the um, Athlon Silver is a little bit faster. And when if you're doing something like editing video, um, editing photos, things like that, where you're going to be sitting there chugging through the CPU, I'm not going to let this this test complete. Um, that the slightly faster CPU is going to be faster obviously and you can see uh, the time difference between these two isn't going to be great though uh, you're talking about you know on a, this is a, a 10 minute run but if you're editing a video and on on the Athlon Silver and it takes 45 minutes to output you know is it really that big a deal to wait you know another 10 minutes for it to finish on the Lenovo so uh, just a comparison so uh, for me this video is long because I sat through that whole benchmark but for you, it won't be quite as long. Uh, but I did just want to compare these two systems now that now I have them as as apples to apples as possible. Um, my personal preference uh, of these two, as far as just overall system, is the Lenovo. But that's because I like its package better. Uh, obviously, the CPU is a faster CPU on the HP, but it's a little bit bigger it has i don't know if you can hear it uh through my mic but it does have a little bit of fan no, uh, noise because it has a fan where the lenovo does not um, in day-to-day -day usage as far as like browsing the web um, a little light gaming things like that you know if i'm playing solitaire it really doesn't matter the lenovo is better watching videos uh, you know, I've, I've ripped basically my entire dvd collection to the computer it plays the same on both of these. The sound's a little bit better, the keyboard's a little bit better, the touchpad is all a little bit better on the Lenovo. So if I were to go out and recommend one of these, my personal preference, and again, that's a preference, is the Lenovo. Uh, the HP is definitely a faster machine. We're gonna do some gaming on both of these again. Uh, have, I've already done gaming on them previously, but again, on the HP, I did it with an upgraded, and on the Lenovo, I did it with it bare bones. So we're swapping that up and we're going to game on the HP uh, as it is out of the box. And we're going to game on the Lenovo 
with the upgrades uh, just to see what that that experience is uh, especially since I can now play some games I couldn't play before because of storage issues um, so that will be something hopefully that I can show you guys here soon uh, they won't be in the same video uh, but there'll be two videos coming out pretty soon with these two systems so uh, now's your chance if you have any specific questions you want to see when I do those videos now I get asked a lot about specific games um, games like uh, Sims 4 I get asked about Sims 4 all the time uh, both of these will play Sims 4 just fine that game is oh, a decade old now something like that um, so you know it, it, it's been out a long time it plays fine on these systems uh, so I would not worry about getting that and playing games on it uh, I'm playing that game on, on either of these systems the problem you run into on the Lenovo if you don't upgrade or don't have the ability to solder a connection on for storage uh, a lot of games are just too big for it you know I get asked a lot about uh, whatchamacallit uh, uh, Gmod uh, Gmod is just too big even uh, uh, Sims 4 if you are playing if you're installing all the packs and stuff that takes up a lot of space so you have to be really be careful and juggle what you're installing onto this machine yes you can install some games especially through steam to the SS, uh, SD card slot but I've had a lot of problems with that between performance and just overall usage and reliability it's not something I would recommend putting anything critical or important or something you want to rely on on that SD card it just isn't an option in my opinion it's great if you have some temporary media files but for anything more than that it's a no-go uh, but yeah so definitely love these systems they're great for a first-time user uh, this laptop will probably become my travel laptop uh, especially now with the storage upgrade uh, if I go on a family trip anything like that this is what will go be, be going in my bag loaded up with movies uh, be able to um, you know check emails things like that uh, when I go on trips which is something I may be doing here pretty soon going on several trips and so this will be my go-to I just find this to be a little bit too big uh, a little bit too noisy this one I can uh, have and not the fan noise it's not terrible it's not actually even super loud it's a little whiny a little high-pitched uh, but it's not loud uh, but any fan noise versus no fan noise at all I mean obviously this is better and the battery life on this is significantly better than it is on the HP this last couple of hours more than the HP does uh, because you know this is having to run a fan and it has a CPU that you know requires more power obviously as we can see through this it's faster it absolutely is a faster CPU uh, but for the use case of these systems I don't feel like this is a necessity I don't think it's a big enough difference to justify over this system so just my thoughts again questions comments leave those down in the comment section down below I'll do my best to answer those hope you enjoyed this video and I thank you for watching